In this video, I'm going to focus on the geolocation feature within A1 WebStats. What geolocation does when it's switched on is have a box pop up on your website that people have a choice of whether to allow or block it. You've probably seen this on websites you go to. In our case, if they say block, it respects their wishes. If they say allow, it allows us to get more data about where that person is physically located in the world. And typically 10 to 20 percent of people allow themselves to be tracked in this way, although they probably don't realize they're doing that. If we look at the output from that, I'm in this account and this company, they sell safari tents, typically to camping sites, glamping, farmers, people like that. Those are the types of people who wouldn't typically be identifiable by an IP address as a company name, but they could be identified by their geolocation where they are. So I've brought up a week's worth of data here and it's showing that 56 of their visitors have been geolocated. And geolocated means that we don't know who they are, we can just see their internet provider here. However, we can see what they looked at on the website page by page. And we also get this geolocation and this varies in the way this is displayed. If we take this one here, highlight it and then search Google for it. And this is definitely better done in Chrome because Chrome will give you these maps within Google. Now, looking at that map there, it doesn't look immediately useful. It doesn't look as if there's anything related to camping or glamping that's been to the website. But when you click on that map and it opens up into a bigger map, you can immediately see that there is a glamping business where that geolocation is. So there's absolutely no doubt at all that the visitor to the website is from this business. So when you can see that and you can see what they looked at page by page, that means you can reach out to that particular business once you've looked them up because they are clearly interested in the products that are on offer. And this doesn't always work. And for example, this next one here, we could look up this particular postcode. Someone's looked at lots of pages here. It looks promising. If we look up the postcode, the map isn't given much here at all. We could click through to the map or we could look at 192 to see things here, you know, residential places and others. But when we look in this area, there's nothing that immediately jumps out as being relevant. When we go back to the data, we can see the time of day could mean that that was someone at home at a, resi at a residential address at that time. However, moving on to the next one here, this is the last example. We can see here on this date, at this time, again, it's an evening. Somebody spent over an hour on the website looking at various pages, including the finance page, and it's got an address and a postcode. Now, if we look at the postcode primarily and search for it, if we went off to a website like 192 here, first of all, and had a look at what's on there, what we're looking for is businesses, ideally. And we can see there's what looks like a residential address and it says there's no businesses in that area. However, if we go back to the Google results and click on this map, even though there's nothing on that map that looks obvious, we click on the map. Although they're pinpointed here by geolocation, there is a glamping business in the area and the distance here is not massive. There's a few hundred meters between these two locations. So it is still quite likely that this visitor geolocated here is related to this business that deals with glamping in that area. Now without that information, there would have been no way of identifying who this visitor to the website was. So geolocation really is very important and particularly so if you're the type of business that needs to look at maps to look at what's in the area and to make the link between that type of business and what you sell and so you know who to reach out to.